it feels like one is peering into a macabre dollhouse of broken lives. Bits of concrete tumble down as people try to clean up or salvage what they can amid the horrors that they can't escape. Five of his relatives were killed in that building. There were three children among them. Images like this are familiar a year ago from the siege of Aleppo. But this is Idlib city. This is where families were supposed to be safe. This was meant to be a refuge, one of the last remaining ones, part of a so-called de-escalation zone that lately has become anything but. The four strikes that hit here happened five days before we arrived. And many of those we met had actually fled from Aleppo. So lucky they were in that back room. Muhammad Qad Haqabji is haunted by all he has lost. His wife was killed in Aleppo six years ago. He's raising his two sons on his own. We ask where the boys are now, and his eyes fill with tears. The boys were both studying for exams when the bombs shook the building, sucked the air out of the room, and everything went pitch black. When the kids were younger, back during happier times. We head south, where some towns already feel deserted. In Ma'arat and Norman, closer to the front lines of the fighting, children rummage through the aftermath of bombs to look for plastic to sell. We do get scared. We hide from the bombs, they say. The Syrian regime and its foreign backers' latest push seems aimed at eliminating, or at the very least suffocating, the last major rebel stronghold. Hundreds of thousands of people have been on the move the last few weeks, many fleeing ahead of what they know is coming, or as soon as the first strikes hit. Some live in makeshift camps along the road to Turkey, bringing everything they can, including their livestock. By now, everyone is resigned to knowing that no one is going to save them. No one is going to stop the violence. Ghada and her family were initially in ISIS territory over a year ago. As they were fleeing, there was an explosion. Her daughter, Sar Sabil, almost lost her leg. I don't like to remember, the seven-year-old tells us. They thought they would be safe, but then the regime and the Russians started bombing. And four days ago, they arrived here. Turkish aid organizations are building new and expanding old camps in Syria right up against their border. Abdel Karim Mohammed's youngest was born in the camp the day they arrived. <laughs> Syria's remaining rubble areas risk turning into the next Aleppo. Only this time, even fewer people are watching. Even fewer seem to care. For many we spoke to here, it's not about if this area will also get bombed, it's about when. And how many souls can get crushed into this shrinking safe space? And what happens when it's gone? Arwa Damon CNN, Idlib, Syria.